Hello. So I will I will share my screen. Hello, everybody. Um, so so thank you <clears throat> thank you very much for the invitation. So this is <clears throat> this is a very good time because the the, the um, uh, uh, this is just. So some work that we did uh, on that were just accepted uh, yesterday. So this is very good to uh, to present here because we just uh, have it accepted. So the idea the idea is to use uh, active DTS. So active DTS is typically when you are using a heat source. In addition of your measurement of temperature through fiber optics, you are using a heat source. And the idea is to use that, but in a sandbox, um, a sandbox where you control the flow and to see if we can really make some measurement of groundwater fluxes and with which accuracy. So the work has been mainly done by Nathalie Simon, who is not here today, but who just finished her PhD and <clears throat> some other colleague from the University of Rennes or the University of Poitiers. So, <clears throat> the, let me introduce the principle on the experimental setup. So the idea of active DTS is to use a heat source. Um, and typically what you can use is a heating cable and then you can record temperature and fiber optic. But what you can use also is the fiber optic cable itself. And typically if you use the armoring of the cable, here you have the fiber optics, but if you use the armoring, you can uh, <clears throat> inject some electrical current along the fiber optic cable and then do a heating. And what is interesting is that <clears throat> depending on the property of the electrical current, you will have a more uh, an increase of uh, temperature that will depend on the heat source, but also that will depend on the flow around. And it has been used more or less as a hot wire right, anemometer in different conditions. And we use it, for instance, in boreholes, but there are other applications. And here, I, what I want to present is some results where we use it in a sandbox experiment to see how we can, and with which accuracy we can measure flow through the sandbox. So here is the uh, cable inside the sandbox. And here we have a heat pulse system that control the injection of current inside along the fiber optic cable. So before to do the experiment, what we did also is some numerical modeling to have some, to check some solution and to check also the methodology to interpret the data. So typically what we did is to do some COMSOL multiphysics. Here you have the fiber optics uh, cable and you have the fully saturated porous media on some flow from left to right. And this is the uniform flow. If you do not have any flow, if the groundwater discharge or groundwater fluxes is zero, then in that case, you have only conduction. In that case, what you observe as an increase of temperature through time is that the early times are controlled by the property of the fiber optics. But then at longer time, what we have is typically an increase of temperature that is classical and that depends on the thermal property of the media. But as soon as you have, um, as soon as you have uh, an advection, and in that case, uh, you do not, uh, if you have an advection, you have an increase of temperature, but the increase of temperature is much less than the increase you would have with only conduction. This is the behavior with only conduction. And when you have some flow, then your temperature, your increase of temperature will stabilize through time on the, Temperature at which, it, which will stabilize will depend on the flow. The larger the flow, the lower the temperature reach. And then you can use this property just to measure flow in sand, sandy aquifers. That the, that the, that's the, the main idea. So here we have some numerical modeling. This is typically what we uh, what we expect 
the temperature increase through time with a conduction dominant period and then an advection dominant period. And we want to deduce the thermal conductivity on the groundwater flux. So I won't go into details, but we can use some solution like moving instantaneous line source solution that already exists and that already have been applied. And it's reproduced very well the evolution of temperature for the uh, greater times. Um, and it allows you to deduce the thermal conductivity on the groundwater discharge. So we have also another method that consists in doing a graphical analysis and determining some uh, characteristic time. So uh, for instance, the time of departure from the conduction dominant here in the conduction dominant regime, you can deduce the thermal conductivity easily just using the slope of the thermal increase through time. And as soon as you have a departure from this behavior, you can use the thermal, the, this characteristic time or the intersection time or the stabilization time. And all these time are related to the groundwater discharge. And so we did the experiment. This is the, 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 the sandbox experiment we use on where we put the fiber optic cable. And what we did is to vary the flow rate in the experiment. For we did few weeks experiment, but here I just show some of the results. At the beginning, we had a high flow rate, and then we decreased the flow rate, and we decreased to another value, and then we decreased to a no flow condition. And this will correspond to each day of the week. And each day, what we did is a heating period. And during this heating, you see the increase of temperature that has been recorded through the fiber optic cable. And what, what, what we can see already is that the, uh, the day four, when there is no flow condition, the heating is much larger than when there is the high flow. So it seems really that the higher the flow rate, the lower the increase of temperature. So here, typically, these are the data that we, some of the data that we obtain. In blue, this is the no flow condition. And in that case, we have indeed an increase of temperature through time that uh, is characteristic of only conduction. But when we increase the flow, the larger the, oh, sorry, <coughs> the larger the flow, the lower the temperature reached at stabilization. And so we have really the typical behavior we expected. And what is interesting is that you have a difference in temperature that reach a few degrees, knowing that typically with the fiber optic DTS, is this is relatively easy to get an accuracy of about 0 0.1 degree. So you can really use this change as to infer the groundwater fluxes inside the sediments. So here, this is the agreement that we obtain uh, for the different value of the flux. And in colored, this is the data. And in black lines, these are the model. And the model perfectly reproduce the data with a great accuracy. What is also interesting is that here, this is a temperature measured something like 10 centimeters ahead of the heating source. And we can also reproduce very well the behavior and the behavior of the uh, temperature at 10 centimeters. So it seems to work very fine. So we did also an analysis. So the conclusion is, is that it works very well. But what is interesting is that we did also an analysis about the accuracy on the range. So I don't have time to present everything, but typically, Considering the typical accuracy of fiber optic DTS, we can measure thermal conductivity with uh, um, <clears throat> a very good accuracy of 0 0.2, 0 0.4 watts per meter per Kelvin. And we have also an accurate and independent estimation of groundwater flux through either the analytical solution or through the characteristic, uh, the characteristic time. And we um, here, this is, 
Here, this is typically the estimated fluxes. And what we can see is that the range of flux that can be measured is relatively large. This depends on the heating duration, but is relatively large. And what is very interesting is that the error on the measurement are relatively low. It's typically few percent. And compared to what we do in high load geology, for instance, measuring the uh, hydraulic conductivity, we get much larger errors. So this seems a very nice and um, an interesting method also to measure groundwater <laughs> fluxes in sediments. And we get a much, uh, uh, much better accuracy by using a heating source rather than simply using passive method. So the, 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 the publication just get accepted and should appear in water resource research very soon. And Nathalie Simon is looking for a postdoc position. So if there is anyone who has a postdoc position for her, that would be great. Thank you very much.